is going on here is I have this, this is a two and a half watt rated photoelectric or photovoltaic cell. So it's right there up to 2.5 watts maximum. And it's, it's open circuit voltage is about 20 volts in, uh, in sunlight. And as you can see here on this ammeter, what's going into this machine right now is practically, you see right here, there's one amp. And I'll just disconnect it just so you can see the needle go to zero. Here, I'll turn the motor off, disconnect it. You see, it's almost practically at zero amps. With my digital meter, it's actually around 100 milliamps, 140 milliamps. So solar cells coming in here, it's energy and it's charging this capacitor, which is then uh, being fed directly into the motor. These are, uh, this is just a timing disc. These are magnets here. And this is a magnetic reed switch. So every time this magnet passes a reed switch, it closes, which switches on this transistor here, which is a IGBT transistor. And of course that switches the power through these coils, which are all connected in parallel. Now these are, these coils are from microwave oven transformer secondaries. So I just took them out, attached them onto here. So every time the reed switch closes, the energy stored in the capacitor, which is powered by the solar cell, is dumped through these coils, uh, producing the magnetic field, which drives these. These are just cheap um, hardware store magnets, ceramics. And um, so every time it, the timing is for right about there, it gets a pulse. And then, so what happens with the energy then? As the fields collapse, that electrical energy, so as some of you may know, um, comes out as an inductive spike. And normally in motors, that's just thrown away. But in this case, it goes through this diode into these 36 volt of batteries. They're just SLA lead acid batteries hooked, hooked up in series. So it's charging a 36 volt bank of batteries from about a 20 volt source which is generally not known in the art which is another neat aspect of this um, so and of course it's once it gets going here it just gets up to speed it's driving this load this fan which is pretty sweet and what I'm going to do is just take an RPM reading here I'll take the fan off so you can see. Okay, so here we go. I got the fan off. Uh, just taking a reading here on the RPM. Eh, it's kind of screwy right now. 222. That seems to be about the range that I've been getting on this with this particular setup here. When I run it on the 24 volt, when I run it on batteries instead of the solar panel, I get it up to about 320 RPM or so. There's quite a bit of torque on here. I can hardly I'm pinching it pretty hard and it's still going. So I want to show something else here I think is really, really important to see. So this is a uh, regular DC motor. I think it's about a 6 volt motor. And um, oh, just one other thing I forgot to mention. This battery here is just used for providing the gate. Uh, signal for the IGBT for the switching. It's not used to actually drive the motor and it's not being charged either. It's just to provide a steady 12 volt um, gate signal for the switch. So I just want to show you this motor here. So 12 volt battery here. See? 12 volt. And uh, watch this motor fly. Once 
we get it hooked up here. So that sucker really goes. I think it's probably more of a six volt motor. So look, I'm going to hook it up to this solar cell, which is about a two, two and a half watt rated panel. So we'll hook it up here and look, nothing happens. Doesn't even turn at all. Isn't that amazing? And what's amazing is that this motor turns, it does all this work at about 200 RPM and it's pretty hard to stop. And this motor won't even turn. So here's another, this is another 12 volt motor, like an automotive one. And I will hook it up here to this battery just so you can see it run as it should. See? Goes pretty good. Now I'm going to hook it up to the solar cell here. Hook it up. See? Hooked up. Nothing happening. It's not turning at all. Wow, so that tells me something about conventional DC motors. And plus you're not able to charge batteries off of them either. You can't you hook this up to a battery and run it, you can't charge another battery bank off of it. That's impossible. But in this case, that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, so just once again, I just want to just show kind of the power input going in here and just the state of all of these batteries, just for anybody who might be scratching their heads or skeptical. Again, this is showing almost zero amps. And um, so I'll show you just the voltages here. So these are the charging batteries. If you can see this screen here, I'll just show you. 12.73, 11, 18, that batteries need some help. And this one is 12.63 and then all in all, Hooked in series, oops, is 36.5. And again, this is just the, uh, the battery that powers the switching, so it's basically providing practically zero, because it's just switching a, a IGBT transistor, 12.58 volts. And what's coming off the panel here, so this is the uh, kind of the equilibrium voltage here where, uh, if you can see that, 10.567, about 10 volts across the storage capacitor. And again, it's got some pretty good, uh, pretty good torque there, pretty good angular momentum there. Going on. So in the next segment, I'm just going to show you a previous motor I made. It's very much like this same geometry, but has the primary coils, which are which is thicker wire and less turns. I'll show you that. Okay. I've got it all hooked up. This is the other motor build, the same geometry. The difference here is, uh, see these coils here? Coming close. And look down there. These are primary coils from a microwave oven transformer. So their impedance is uh, practically zero. You can take an ohm meter and check it out for yourself. Like they're practically zero, maybe 0.5 ohms resistance. So they'll draw a lot more current. So, uh, so I have four of these like in the other motor. One, two, three, four, and then just a bunch of these again. Just ceramic magnets, hard, hardware store magnets. Okay, so I've disconnected the solar panel, and if you come over here and look, it's just, it's connected this thing up to this 12 volt battery here, so we're going to run the motor off of this. And again, nothing changed over there, 36 volts on the charging end. So, let's get it started here, just watch the ammeter here. As I start it up, you're going to see it peg. 
just pegs the meter. Pulls a lot of amps. My point in this video is just to show that this thing takes a lot more energy than the other one. So what I've found is that the higher density coils, more windings, just makes it more efficient. It takes less input power used to get the same amount of RPMs. So here you can see the the average amps are, are leveling out here around 2 amps. So 12 volts, about 12 volts and about 2 amps. It's about 24 watts. And so here it goes here. It's getting up there pretty good in speed. Let's try to take an RPM reading here. Uh, if you can read that, it'll be about 300, 320 RPM, something like that. About 300 RPM. About 24 watts input, and I've had the other motor uh, about 350 RPM on like 2 watts input, like 200 milliamps um, at 24 volts. And over here, let's just take a look at the charging here, just for fun. So plus minus 40, it's at 41 volts. Can you see that? Can you put the camera on that? Thanks. 41 volts. So now I'll shut the motor off and you'll see the voltage drop. Just so you can see that the batteries are actually charging. So it's dropping down 39.5, 39.4. And I'll turn it on again. Going up. 39.9, 40. And you know, it's still got pretty good torque on that. It's pretty hard to slow that down. Just so it's running on, now it's running on 24 volts. And it's also charging 24 volt, a 24 volt battery bank on the back end. And here's the, uh, the fan hooked up. And it's drawing about, it's bouncing there between two and three amps. So about 40, yeah, about 50 watts, my math is right. So just for comparison's sake, I'm going to show this motor hooked up just like the other one, again, running off 24 volts and drawing about, oh, 200, 250 milliamps. And just so that you can see that's calibrated pretty good. See, disconnect the source, reconnect it. Again, see that's about as much current as it's drawing. 24 volts times 0.25. That's about how much power it's running off to keep this thing going. And again, charging a 24 volt battery on the back side. And uh, an RPM measurement. Uh, this says 875. But there's, it's measuring off the blades of the fan, so there's three of those. So divide that by three, that's about 290 RPM. So it's about 290 RPM right now in this configuration. And um, this, I'll just show you the batteries charging. Um, 27.5. Now if I shut the motor off. See 27.069. So it's dropping. It's just to show you that they are actually receiving a charge here. And yeah, so that's the RPM reading I'm getting right now. It's the most reasonable one. It's about 310, 312 without the fan on here. And again, it's still drawing the same amount of current. Like it doesn't make any difference whether the fan's on it or not. And for those skilled in the art, they know what happens when uh, you load down a motor with fans and stuff. It draws more current on the front end, but this is not showing any, any change in that. And I'll just show you here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow this thing down. 
I'm really squeezing it pretty hard here. Watch the current. This doesn't make really any difference. I'm really loading it down here. There we go. Pretty cool.